ladies and gentlemen. My tax year Thank you, thank you very much. My tax here is to introduce our next speaker for this occasion. A man who needs no introduction at all. Because we all know him as a father. You see, when God wants to rescue a people, he sends them a man. It was so in Bible days when God sent Moses to deliver his children from the land of slavery. And it is so today, for our God has not changed. And if you know the story of our next speaker, you cannot but agree with me that this is a man who has been handpicked by God and prepared to lead our country for a time such as this. This man represents experience and not experiment. Because he has gone through the mill. At the international level, he said, as the first co-chair of the United Nations Advocacy Group, on the sustainable development goals he also served as the african union's high level committee that did the preparatory work to pave the way for the african continental free trade area agreement he is a former chairman of the authority of heads of states of ECOWAS, and currently he's a chair of the Tana Higher Level Forum on Security in Africa. In Ghana, he has gone through the mill as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's been member of parliament for the good people of Bali Bamboy for three terms. He's been a deputy minister for communications. He's been a minister for communications. He's been Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. And as Vice President, he was not a mere mate, but a co-driver. He has been President of the Republic of Ghana. And by the grace of God, he shall be sworn in as President of the Republic of Ghana on 7 January 2025. He is a man of vision, a man of character, a man you can trust, a man who exudes humility and love for God and country seamlessly. Under his tenure for president, Ghana experienced true leadership and transformation. No region or sector was left out, but he was misunderstood, he was maligned, he was demonized and bastardized. But as he himself predicted, posterity has judged him well. And today he stands vindicated. And Ghanaians are yearning for his return. Ghanaians are saying they have missed him and cannot wait to see him at the Jubilee House again. Ladies and gentlemen, some call him the nation builder. But I call him Abu Brokosuya, Adiebeyeye, and Saida. Now with a standing ovation and a rousing round of applause, make welcome to the microphone, the man of vision, the man of character, the nation builder, who will lead us to build the Ghana we want together. His Excellency, His Excellency, His Excellency,
Thank you very much. Thank you, Jama Group. Thank you very much. Let me say that let me say that I don't have any list. And so for those of them who were referred to by General as having chosen their positions, you may be very, very deeply disappointed. <laughs> but I want to thank you very much and say good evening to you all, my brothers and sisters, my fellow comrades, and all the good people of Ghana. Let me begin by acknowledging our National Chairman, Honorable Johnson Asiedun Ketia, our General Secretary Fifi Fiavi Kwete, the Chairman of our Council of Elders Al Haji Mahama Idrisu, and all members of the Council of Elders, and indeed all members of the NDC family. I wish with respect to acknowledge all distinguished members of our society who are with us today, including our traditional leaders, our traditional rulers our religious leaders, our students, members of the diplomatic corps, market women, public servants, and indeed Ghanaians of all levels of society. You're all welcome and I acknowledge you. I also acknowledge my siblings and my family. My son Sharaf is here with me this evening. And most importantly, I recognize Mrs. Lodina Dramani Mahama. My faithful companion who has stood by my side through all the rough and tumble of Ghanaian politics. But today we are here to celebrate one person, and that is my running mate, in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajemai. Ladies and gentlemen, I studied history in the university, so I always start with history. History is made up of stories. And as a history student, I've always found an insatiable love for stories. These stories are not simply meant to entertain us, but they are meant to teach us about ourselves, our choices, and our actions, and the useful lessons that we can learn from these stories. Indeed, the evolution of humankind has been the story of triumph over trials and challenges. And throughout history, civilization after civilization, society after society, humanity has found in its lowest moments within itself a rare but potent dose of inspiration nestled in the illustrious hearts of its best people to turn things around. In adversity, we find opportunity. Ghana is at one such juncture. Ghana is at one such juncture in its life. And it requires all our best human resources to change the course of our history and steer our ship of state into calmer waters. Often when our stories are told, they are about his story. But right before us today in Ghana, another story is playing out, right before our eyes. Another history is in the making. By this time, 
I will call it her story. Her story will blend favorably with our past to create what I call our story, which will inform our perspectives, shape our destinies, and determine our democratic de journey. Therefore, I stand before you today with a deep sense of humility, a renewed sense of hope to introduce Professor J. Nana Opoku Ajeman. A very respected woman, a female achiever, a woman of integrity, who would make her mark on our country's journey towards progress and prosperity. There is no question about it. Over the last few years, Ghana, our dear country, <laughs> has sunk to the lowest depths in our history as an independent nation. <clears throat> our country, Ghana, over the last few years, has been buffeted by turbulent seas and has been sailing against a very strong headwind. Our leadership has been uninspiring and inept. We have lived under an administration that is unable to be truthful and honest to the people of Ghana and never accepts responsibility for anything. There can be no question in our minds that the effect of this maladministration has been so insidious and pervasive that today our people have lost faith and hope in not just the government of the day but in our democratic system of governance. Ladies and gentlemen, our country needs an urgent reset. Our people need a leadership that is inspiring, one that will make our people believe and trust in our Ghana project once again and believe in the hope of a better future. Ghana needs a leadership that will place value on integrity, truth and accountability. Ghana needs a leadership that will roll up its sleeves and accept responsibility for our current reality and face the present storm stoically and steer the ship of state into safer and calmer waters. Ghana in its present crisis needs leadership that will do things differently, including sacrificing personal comforts to achieve a Ghana of shared prosperity for all of us, not just a few. The next four years will be pivotal for our country's destiny. The agency required to take our country to the height it deserves will be matched by each waking day. If there was any indication of intent to think outside the box, to be innovative and use our best human resources to deliver the Ghana we all want, then it is in my choice of Jane Nana Opokwa Jeman as my running mate. As my running mate and potential Vice President of Ghana going into the 2024 elections. I do not doubt this as her globally acclaimed credentials attest to that. Nana Jane is a woman of unquestionable integrity and whose reputation for honesty and ethical behavior is unparalleled. Our late leader, the founder of the National Democratic Congress and the Fourth Republic, President Jerry John Rawlings, acknowledged her integrity when he told her in 2020, there is no doubt that it is your integrity that has earned you the position as running mate. A former Minister of Education, a trailblazing first female Vice Chancellor of a public university in Ghana, and celebrated as a scholar and as an administrator, her shining credentials are endless on the African continent and across the globe. She is a woman who will accept responsibility and bring honesty and truth back to the office of the Vice President. With Nana 
Ghana Jane as my vice president, Ghana can be assured that an NDC government led by me, President John Dramani Mahama, <laughs> will fight corruption and restore the gaping absence of accountability that is the current hallmark of this government. We will work tirelessly to ensure transparency, accountability and justice for all and not just a few. I know Nana Jane is a passionate advocate of the Mahama 24-hour economy policy. She understands the importance of providing equal opportunities for women and young people to thrive in our economy. And as Vice President, she will ensure that women and young people have more access to jobs, helping to create a more inclusive and prosperous society. Beyond our Ghanaian borders, Nana Jane's esteemed reputation precedes her. Major international organizations and allies highly regard her, and she represents Ghana with dignity and efficiency on the global stage. Her presence will open doors, increase trust for our nation, and secure many benefits with our international partners. But perhaps most importantly, Nana Jane represents the aspirations and dreams of every Ghanaian, especially our female population. As Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. As my second in command. Thank you. Thank you. As my second in command, she will break the glass ceiling that has held our women down. And she will generate a new hope in our daughters that the sky is the limit. And that they can also aspire to occupy the highest offices of the land. If we are to build the Ghana we want together, then Jane Nana Opukwa Jemang is truly the Vice President Ghana is looking for. She, she will be a perfect complement in many ways, serving with dignity, courage, integrity and grace. And under a Mahama Nana Jane administration, the government will work harmoniously with a seamless bridge between the office of the president and the office of the vice president. <laughs> At the end of our tenure, our four-year tenure, the story that will be recorded will be our story. It will be a collective legacy built by the best human resources of our country, male and female. Nana brings a depth of knowledge and a legacy of leadership to our ticket. I worked with her as my education minister and again as my running mate. I've enjoyed a great working relationship with her, one that is based on mutual respect for each other and her deep sense of loyalty. She has great insights into human resource management, empowerment and social development. And under my administration, she will have oversight, among others, of the education sector, the health sector, gender and social protection.
Thank you. In these, in these dire times, when unemployment rates have risen astronomically and poverty is stalking our land, ours will be a pair of experienced individuals poised to work together to make the difference that Ghanaians deserve. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, comrades, my brothers and sisters, I'm happy to present to you my running mates and by the grace of God and the votes of you, my fellow citizens, I'm happy to present Ghana's next Vice President. Professor Jane Nana Opoku.